Well, hello everyone. This is a bit of an experiment, I have to admit. Um, as a designer, car designer, product designer, industrial designer, probably also architect, um, we are dreaming of an ability to translate identity or express identity into and in inanimate objects. Um, I haven't really been able to find anything that pragmatically helps me with this, but I have developed a little bit of a method here which I would like to share with you in this video. And what it boils down to is um, I have analyzed for myself in a pragmatic sort of way what identity probably is and how we can translate identity into an inanimate object. Right, I'm going to walk you through the, the steps here now. Let's ask ourselves this question here. Who is this fish? It's a goldfish in a bowl. And as anything in nature, it is unique. So it should have an identity. I think there is a connection between uniqueness and identity. And I believe we're going to end up with something like this. I am calling the goldfish a unique agent, as you can see here in the middle. This is the goldfish, the unique agent. Unique because there's only one agent because he will do stuff. And I believe that everything this goldfish does manifests his identity. So the goldfish might describe himself as such. Or as follows, I only eat the big food chunks. You might have observed this in the goldfish. It, he doesn't like the small ones. He is that goldfish that eats only the big food chunks. And maybe that goldfish also only swims clockwise in his glass. And tends to prefer to, he, to keep the tail straight rather than tip to the side. It is perfectly clear that the goldfish requires water, among other things. So that is a, a need that the goldfish has. Perhaps the goldfish has other more specific needs, like a different light source. None of that fluorescent stuff. There will be features the goldfish has. May, he may or may not be aware that he's orange. The goldfish will probably value his own comfort above everything else that's because he's a goldfish. And the goldfish may have a philosophy. And the philosophy may be if there is food, it's good. And maybe the goldfish knows that he comes from a pet shop, but I doubt it. Anyway, that would be the kind of association that the goldfish may have. manifests his own identity outwardly. Now we're going to look at how externals are reflecting on the identity of the goldfish, the unique agent. And they will do all these things here. So how others see this fish. I'm sure plenty of people will say it's a boring pet. Others might say you've got to be a nerd to want one. And it's about as exciting as a cactus. Some might tell you it's actually called Carasius auratus. Some might say it looks like a carrot with eyes. Some might characterize the fish as being a quiet, peaceful, vulnerable creature. And some might say having one is like keeping a friend in a swimming pool. And the stereotype might simply that might be simply that of a goldfish. So this is how others reflect on the identity of the goldfish. Or how others see the goldfish, right? 
So <clears throat> we can do this for animals, we can do this for people, we can do this perhaps even for plants, for the natural world. But if we enter the artificial world, we are entering a realm where things are no longer as unique as they are in the natural world. I'm saying as unique because obviously even something mass-produced is technically unique because it will have scuff marks and um, signatures that its mates don't have. But let's just stick with that idea that um, we product developers, designers, architects, uh, engineers are making things that want to or should have an identity. And there will be artificial things, and yes, there may be millions of them, and they may all have that shared identity. But how do we translate a, a desirable biological identity into something artificial? I think we need to do this, because as biological beings, we tend to build stronger relationships with things that appear to have a life of their own which is why, for example, people love their cars. They're not machines to them. They are, there, there, is a, there is a being in there somewhere to them. So let's use a car here. And let's use the same matrix that we used for the goldfish. Can we call a car a unique agent? Actually, we cannot, because the car isn't really unique and uh, it's not an agent either because it isn't making any of these choices <clears throat> so but it was what it is though it is an outward projection which leads to a perception of a manifestation of an identity that we associate with a product What actually is it that defines that? Now, as I said, I'm using the same matrix as I used for the goldfish, but now I'm trying to substitute the traits that we used for the goldfish with something that actually applies to an inanimate object. For example, where the goldfish or, or, or where a biological being may make choices, what does an inanimate object do? I don't think the, the Jaguar here doesn't choose anything, but the target user group it is intended for will uh, require certain choices to be made. The Jaguar we see here doesn't really act, but it may have functions and it may have an observable behavior as a vehicle. Our Jaguar will have a certain appearance, clearly. It will have a, a characteristic aesthetics, which help us identify it as a Jaguar. Jaguar looks like a Jaguar, okay. There will be needs which are quite objective here. A car never wants anything irrational. So maintenance, for example, is a need that car has. The vehicle will have features, just like a fish or like a, like a biological being does too. These features in this case are technological and material solutions. The car itself has no values, of course, because it doesn't make its own judgments. But there will be priorities of use that are associated with this vehicle. So the, we could say that the vel if a Jaguar liked a certain setting, it would probably be the parking lot of a golf hotel. It wouldn't be the rainforest of the Amazon. And then is there a philosophy that the Jaguar holds? No, of course there isn't because the Jaguar is not a living thing. But there is a philosophy that is attached to the Jaguar and it is superimposed on it by the makers. Is it an ethical thing, the, the Jaguar? Is it a profitable uh, philosophy that is attached 
it's debatable but you see the point here uh, we want the jaguar to come with some sort of philosophical set <clears throat> and then the association well where we biological beings may have friends um, they will clearly have a demographic grouping that they belong to i would tend to associate jaguars with um, high earning um, well-educated people so this is basically how I suggest we can translate um, the traits that help us define a biological being into uh, the manifestation of an inanimate object let's take that to the next step we have we have created this translation now um, let's do something that takes us a bit further as designers we are shaping this yeah I've previously already alluded to the philosophy of the Jaguar and so on somebody came up with that that would be a designer or a marketing team or whoever and they're shaping that that identity that is then associated <clears throat> with the product and I tend to call that a unique phantom agent because it's not a it's not really there yeah we are creating an image of something a reflection of something really if you want and um, so these I think are the traits that we that we use to do that with And uh, let's go through these one by one. So if you're a designer setting about creating an identity in an inanimate object, you would probably create the image of the object based on the brand. You would create association through classification. Yeah, if it's a Jaguar, then your classification is luxury vehicle you're creating an analogy through reflections on the rival products you are creating a description using dimensions and data you may even create a caricature by creating a retro product yeah we all know the new mini that came out ages ago that was really a caricature of the old mini or the new beetle was a caricature of the um, the old beetle so in, in a way we are we are referencing things here um, there could also be a special purpose association of the product special purpose being uh, if it's a unimog it's clearly uh, off-road use uh, utilitarian vehicle there will be a characterization of some kind which is frequently done in the car industry you might use an icon an animal a cartoon figure an actor a film figure to help jog the designers uh, imagination designers often create mood boards that help set the, the tone and the background of expectations and, and context this is something you can do to characterize perhaps the vehicle is even like a cartoon figure you might have spike the dog sitting next to you on the desk when designing a small car to give it a bit of grunt like spike the dog perhaps the vehicle is going to be the king of something yeah I once test drove a Citroen in France and uh, the salesman said this vehicle is the king of comfort and these kinds of things stick obviously that is a nice metaphor to put there and perhaps you even have a convenient stereotype you can use to uh, find a conventional place allotted to your product so I think with that we have pretty much everything we need to um, to give an inanimate object a sense of identity and a well-rounded 
character even, if you will. And that is it. I, I hope you find this interesting and perhaps it will even help you a little. If so, all the best. Generally all the best. Always. And uh, all the best with your products and projects. <laughs>